before I show you how I decked out the spurs, I've got a giveaway at the end of the video. That aside, this is how it all happened. Another home office and desk setup makeover. If you've been following the channel for a while, you might have watched my first makeover which happened to be my second video on YouTube. Fast forward, almost two years later, another one is happening and I'm sure most of you would agree, once you join the home office movement, iterations are almost a given and the quest to make it better, be it aesthetically, accessory wise, you name it, just never stops. While these changes are not necessary, over the past two years my creative needs have been continuously changing, hence the reason why I needed a change to ensure my creative juices keep flowing. Having already set up a good foundation in my previous makeover, the elements of functionality, cohesiveness and aesthetics were flowing well but needed some optimization to accommodate my changing needs. Thanks to you guys I got my first 1000 subs, monetization and that opened doors for me to work with brands which comes with packs like getting things sent over but since my storage was a bit limited, most of those items ended up in my spare bedroom or hidden behind this closet. So, one of the main areas I had to address was storage and since I'm big on design, aesthetics had to be on point as well. Now, for the most part, the wall behind my monitor looked okay but the design enthusiast in me wanted to improve the aesthetics of the wall and that would come with some extra benefits in the form of soundproofing thanks to these acoustic walnut panels. I took the measurements of each section of the wall but being a novice when it comes to power tools, I struggled a bit but thanks to YouTube University, a few tutorials got me up to speed when cutting them to size but not without a few mistakes here and there. After that, I gave them a light sand, stained and finally sealed them using polyurethane. From there, I cleared the shelves and since the shelf brackets somewhat got in the way, I had to uninstall them before mounting the walnut slot panels then put them back once I was done. I know from first value it looks complicated but it's far from it especially when you have tools like the level mat. Unlike traditional levels it can fit in your pocket and it's super easy to carry around. Once you turn it on it illuminates against the wall and the red line helps you ensure whatever you're mounting is straight and it doesn't stop there. Thanks to the standard cam width you can angle it however you want allowing you to align your project even in the weirdest of positions. Once I had them aligned properly, I had the option of using liquid nails, screwing it on the wall or just nail them using a bright nailer and I chose to go with liquid nails then reinforced with a bright nailer. Throughout the process, I made a few mistakes but I eventually managed to get everything to look proper. Once the back wall was done, I turned to the one behind the desk. Now, besides setting up more storage, my backdrop when in Zoom meetings never quite matched the aesthetic appeal of my desk setup so I decided to give it a first slip as well. Starting by installing these Gobi LED light strips, I mounted the strip channels then carefully attached the strip lights and covered them with a diffuser. I know you're about to ask, why didn't I just go with the Gobi rope light? Well, Gobi doesn't ship all their products to the Australian market like they do in the US, Europe, UK and Canada, but other than that, their products are really good quality and also quite affordable compared to Philips Hue. If anyone at Gobi is watching, please start shipping to Australia and hook your boy up. That aside, for some perspective, here's how it looks with the diffuser and here's how it looks without. With the light strips out of the way, next up was storage and I started working on it the following day. The IKEA Besta was a perfect fit although piecing it up together and mounting it on the wall on my own was quite the task. Following the manual, it took me about an hour to assemble it and just as I was about to mount it on the wall, I realized the suspension rail was designed for a different Besta unit. At this point, I felt the storage idea had come to a halt but just before I beat it, I thought I could improvise the mounting points for the rail latches and that's why I decided to screw these tiny timber blocks on the middle cabinet dividers and it turned out well. From there, using a stud finder, I marked the studs and used the level mat to properly align the suspension rail, then screwed it on to the studs to provide proper anchorage. After that, the moment of truth arrived, mounting it on the wall. Truth be told, if it were not for the heavy weights I shift in the gym, I wouldn't have done it on my own, but in saying that, I recommend finding someone to help you. Talking of help, while the best unit was properly anchored on the wall, I opted to add wall brackets to help it stay in place just in case. After that, I mounted the doors, then added this cabinet draw push on each of the doors. With donkey work out of the way, it was time to make it a spectacle for the senses and in came the walnut acoustic slat walls. After cutting them to size, I repeated the process I did on the main wall and since it was late at night, I downed the tools and finished the remaining bit the following day.
At this point, I was happy with how it looked, but I wanted to spruce it up even more. So I added this strip light from Kobe, and just like I'd done before, I mounted the strip channels, attached the strip light, then covered it with a diffuser. Moving along, like I'd mentioned earlier, my creative needs have been growing, and with the tech I've gathered over the years, charging them becomes an absolute nightmare. To solve this, I decided to add a charging session on the famous IKEA pegboards. One trick I learned from Becky and Chris is before mounting the pegboard on the wall, lay the pegboard pins and other accessories on the floor to give you a rough idea of how they will look like, then from that you can play around with different configurations. Once I was happy with the layout, I connected a power board to the main socket, then mounted it on the slot hole using double-sided tape. From there, I installed the pegboards, then using double-sided tape again, I mounted this U-Green gun charger which gives me a variety of ports to connect the charging cables. Next up was a landing spot for my charging devices and I zip tied this 3-in-1 mesh tray on the pegboard and for context, this is how the charging hub looks on it. After that, I hung the rest of the pegboard beams and added this new tube light to create some ambience. For the keyboard enthusiasts out there, this is a good way to display your keyboards and have your keyboard switches organized as well. To save me the valuable minutes I walk back and forth through the kitchen whenever I want to grab a cold drink or just even water in the middle of my work sessions, I added a tiny fridge and stocked it with my favorite beverages and water. The following day, I started the credenza build and although it was straightforward, a few pieces in I noticed that the middle and outside boards were upside down, so I had to redo them and once that bit was done, I cruised through the remainder of the build. The space next to the fridge was calling for an occupant and the credenza perfectly fit there but before doing that, I had to get it ready for the accessories that I'll add a little later in the video. First thing was to get a power source and I drilled a hole through the back and connected it to the initial power board after which I ran it underneath the slats to ensure it was neat and tidy. Since I was so much in love with the strip light vibe, I once again mounted another one behind the credenza going through the same process and once it was done, it was now time to push it against the wall and tell you what the entire back wall looked sublime and I wasn't even done decking it out yet. With majority of the back wall done, it was time to get the closet storage up to speed but before that I wanted a spot where I could put away my tripods. After brainstorming for a bit, I chose to improvise using this broom and mop holder which I spray painted black to match the ongoing theme. To solve the issue of clearance from the wall, I used these two cork pieces to give me some clearance from the wall so that the tripods could hang properly and I was happy with the result. Since this poster basically summarizes my life mantra, I had to find a new home for it after hanging it over the power points on the back wall for over 2 years and right behind the door was the perfect place. Moving along, if you've been watching my videos for a while now, you might have noticed this closet is always closed and this is why. All the things I wanted out of sight in my home office ended up hidden behind these sliding doors but not anymore. I removed all the items in there as well as the sliding doors to open up the space. From there, I got ready to assemble the Fialbo shelving unit from IKEA, but before getting into that, I had to make sure the walnut aesthetic continues. So using contact paper, I DIY the top shelf and for those who've used contact paper before, you know how stressful it can get and even though it wasn't perfect, the floors add an interesting element. After that, my attention shifted to the Fialbo shelving units, but unlike the Pesta, these two were super easy to set up and after 40 odd minutes, I had assembled both of them. I also mounted two pegboards to create more storage and added a bunch of pegboard pins to them. As you might have noticed, creating the perfect ambience and aesthetic has been a key factor in this makeover and just like on the back wall, I added a gobi light strip to add character and aesthetic lighting in the closet area. From there, I shifted to my desk setup and for the most part, everything on my setup was okay apart from a few areas that needed little tweaks to improve the user experience. And speaking of user experience, my mic boom arm hasn't been giving me the best experience. After using it for over 3 years, it's become a bit flimsy and it's also quite short, which meant every time I wanted to do my voiceovers, I had to slightly lean towards it and tell you what, when you're recording for hours on end, your neck and back start to feel it. 
So, to solve that problem, I got the Elgato Wave Mic Amp and thanks to its length and swivel capabilities, recording is going to be a lot easier and more ergonomic. Installation was so straightforward, after mounting the clamp, I added the riser for extra length, then put the amp. Like mentioned not too long ago, it makes recording a lot easier thanks to features like its rotatable head and the quarter to 3 8 and quarter to 5 8 inch adapters that accommodate a variety of microphones. And while on the subject of microphones, my Blue Yeti microphone had served me well but it was time to upgrade. And this is where I got torn between the Shure SM7B and the Blue Baby Bottle SL. Both relay excellent audio but the Blue Baby's aesthetic got me feeling some type of way, so after an intense debate with myself, I chose to use them interchangeably but the Blue Baby bottle had a fast run. Good thing, I knew both were XLR mics, so an audio interface would be needed and not just any interface but one that was able to keep 48V phantom power and the Orient Evo 4 screamed at the top of my head. Not only does it look good but also has great functionality. Speaking of functionality, it comes with two XLR inputs which means I can use both the SM7B and the Blue Baby Bottle SL but I'll go with one at a time. If you'd like an in-depth look at it, I'll link my premium desk accessory video in the description box. While on the desk optimization train, another area that needed some work was my lighting department. I started off by switching my LED strip as the one I had previously from Meroz gave me lots of trouble with connectivity and every time the signal would drop making it difficult to adjust the colors. But thanks to Govis reliability, that would now be a thing of the past. After carefully maneuvering it through the forest of cables, I got it up and running. Next up was the Elgato Streamlight and like pointed out earlier, when in Zoom meetings my backdrop let me down then when darkness fell, the hash light from my ceiling didn't do me any justice either. With the backdrop part of the equation 3 quarter way there, lighting was the next bit and my Elgato Streamlight would come in clutch and I put it on the right side of my desk. Still on lighting, I also added the Govi Floor Plus to cast light against the slot hole and they fit right in. Moving further down, I also wanted to bring back my Gromit desk shelf and while my desk in one didn't have any issues, I just wanted something different and having put my Gromit desk shelf on ice for almost a year, this was the perfect time to bring it back. And while on the same line of thought, my mechanical steampunk keyboard also had to make a comeback. Many of you have been amazed by it over the past couple of months and your comments say it all. My steampunk mouse also raised lots of eyebrows and while it fits the aesthetic, my Logitech MX Master 3 will hold its place. Speaking of holding places, my Groben mousepad lost its place for a few months and no better time to bring it back than in a home office makeover. By the way, if you're keen to know more about the Steampunk keyboard plus so much more in the keyboard world, I'll leave a link of the review in the description box as well. Moving along, storage being one of the main proponents of this makeover, my IKEA Alex drawers needed some aesthetic love and a few sprays from Black Rust Oleum spray paints served more than enough. Once they dried up, I added more IKEA drawer organizers and attached double-sided velcro tape to make sure they stayed in place and that summed up the desk setup upgrades. From there, the next part I had to tackle was lighting. With a few areas already handled, I only had a small bit to address. For the most part on sunny days, I get more than enough light from the huge window to the left of my setup but when the weather starts to flicker, that's where my artificial lights kick in. My Kodox SL60W serves me well but we've all heard about making the process as frictionless as possible and that's where I decided to mount my new set of lights, the Aperture Amaran 100D to the wall and to make it even softer, I added a 35.5 inch Aperture Light Dome with the Honeycomb. Now with a single click on my phone, I'll be able to turn it on and light up my entire setup and it doesn't stop there. I'll also be able to adjust the intensity to my liking for whatever scenario I want and I can swivel the light to focus on the area I want. Next up was my main light fixture and one what describes it, awful. Every time I look at it, it reminds me of the cons I use when doing my agility sessions. To save me from that never ending nightmare, I installed this light fixture which adds so much character and texture to the space thanks to the brown hem prop and the industrial design of the frame. I then added a smart bulb for the convenience of control at the press of a button on my phone or two voice commands via Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa. Just a disclaimer, even though I did mine thanks to YouTube University, I'd advise calling a Sparky or as most people know them, electricians to do it for you. Once that was done, I added these corner LED lights for ambience especially late at night then switched my cab for lamp to the other side as it would perfectly cast its light on something you'll see a little later in the video. To finish it up, I added smart plugs to all the non-smart lights for ease of control. 
At this point, I only had a few things remaining. I started by placing my collectibles on the shelves above my desk, and the vintage cameras, together with my disassembled iPhone 5 from Grid Studios, bring out my personality and add so much character to this piece. I then moved to the industrial shelving unit to the left and put back my watch box, eavesbud, gimbal, waterfall, my storage baskets at the very bottom, then swapped my old Canon printer with the HP Tango, which comes with lots of useful features, starting with its smart feature. This will enable me to print my documents with so much ease, and since I'll also be adding the second gen Google Nest app, using voice activated hands free printing will make life so easy, and I can either use Google Assistant or Alexa, which is a better way compared to when I had to get off my chair and manually do it with my my old Canon printer. Being a techie, making my home office smart has always been at the back of my mind and having fast and reliable internet had to be a priority for this to work. Speaking of reliable internet, well for the most part my internet works well, every now and then it cuts off since my home office is at the very end of the house so to solve the problem, I added the TP-Link Deco AX 1800 Superior Mesh Wi-Fi and this will make such a big difference. The TP-Link Deco distributes internet in a house that's got up to 6 bedrooms bringing life to those internet dead zones. I placed the main one next to my modem, the other one on the Fiabo shelving unit and the final one in my bedroom. Once everything was in place, setting up was easy. I followed the instructions on the manual and it was up and running in less than 15 minutes. Like everything nowadays, an app makes monitoring and control a walk in the pack. Speaking of monitoring and control, this air purifier conveniently helps me monitor and control the air quality in my home office and more importantly, on occasions when the good old stinker sneaks out, just like granddad in this TikTok video. Its high efficiency filtration system cleans it up with so much ease and with a coverage of 388 square meters, it's more than enough for my home office. While air purifiers can be noisy, this one is on the lower side thanks to its whisper technology and again, like most devices in my setup, I can control it using Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. Moving back to the closet, over the past year, the channel has grown and I project even bigger growth in the coming years and that means a better data storage system. With that in mind, I had to find a data storage solution system and that's where my network attached storage, commonly known as a NAS, comes in and I got the Synology NAS with 6 bays. I've got a separate video just on data storage and setting up a NAS coming so make sure you sub to the channel so that you don't miss out. After that, I moved to the credenza underneath the IKEA Pesta. With most of my smart devices already up and running, I had to find a control hub and since I already used Google on my TVs, the second gen Google Nest hub was the perfect fit. Now, since I'm not just all work and no play, I also added this record player and these interesting looking bookshelf speakers which I had to DIY since the original silver color didn't flow so well with the rest of the setup. Speaking of old work and no play, doing that while seated at my desk wouldn't quite add up so I added a chill spot and the Hans Wagner shell chair was the ideal fit with my card floor lamp casting the perfect light canopy when I decide to chill in the office late at night. A design tip I've always told you guys, repetition creates rhythm and as you can see, the shell chair references the mid-century vibe from the Imps office chair, the natural oak color on the pegboards is referenced in the record player and hemp rope on the light fixture, the bronze on my vintage shell phone carries on on my steampunk keyboard and microphone, just to name but a few. Now, with the space completely decked out, the grandeur and boldness of the tech stood out so much, so I added some subtlety and softness amidst all of that and straight away you could feel the warmth trickle through the room thanks to the plants and this is how I went about it. Before putting them in their rightful places, I had to do some tweaking. Some of the plants had outgrown their pots, so I had to switch them into bigger pots. In their place, I put the ones I've been propagating in my garage just to create some balance next to the window and ensure the beautiful view into the roof stays clear. Next to the shell chair, the space looked a bit empty, so I added this rubber plant and to add a bit of height, I placed it in an elevated plant pot and boy, how elegant does it look. On the industrial shelf, the Devil's Ivy retained its spot, then I added some tiny succulents and the famous IKEA plants followed. Since the cascading effect makes any space look amazing, I added some on the shelves right above my desk and the ones below the pegboard which perfectly coincided with the return of my rugby trophies. Then, this bamboo plant fit perfectly in the corner next to the closet, then I added a few plants on the closet pegboards as well. To sum up the plant renaissance, I placed two next to the record player, another one on the bester and fridge, then a few on the pegboard beans and the curtain rail next to the wind. Now, 
I know plants are not everyone's cup of tea, but they add so much to any space. And for context, this is what the setup looks without the plants. And this is what it looks like with the plants. I'll let you be the judge. After a little over tweaks of putting an insane amount of hours from early mornings to the dead of the night, shedding sweat, blood and lots of scratches, I can say I've achieved a fusion of form, function and aesthetics in my home office. In my overhead pesto storage, I stored some of my camera and audio accessories. Then in the storage cabinet below, my office supplies like printing paper, batteries, remote controls, among many other things, all resting on these organizers. My commonly used items found a home on all the pegboards in the office, and my battery charges and keyboard switches finally got an organized charging station and storage place respectively. Most important of all, I must admit, it's so satisfying and fulfilling just working in here. All in all, I just wanted to say a big thank you to you guys who've been supporting the channel since day one because you've no idea how much it means to me and that is why I'll be giving away the Logitech MX Master 3S and the level med measuring tool to one of my subscribers. All you gotta do is ensure you subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram since that's where I'll be contacting the winner and that's because YouTube is still struggling with spammers so don't fall for anyone telling you to send money for shipping. I'll be doing everything from my end. Well, that sums up my home office slash YouTube studio makeover and as it stands, it's right at the sweet spot of what I've always wanted but being the design enthusiast I am, an iteration is never out of question. For now, it's the best I've ever had. I hope this video inspires you and gives you some ideas on how to create and design your ideal workspace. And if you enjoyed it and found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. To see my first home office makeover, check out this video. Until then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.